unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 3. Let's begin. My father's son, uh -huh, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Uh -huh, he taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandment. Who is writing that? Solomon. Solomon says he was his father's son. And because he was his father's son, he was tender and only beloved in the sight of his mother. Only beloved in the sight of his mother, meaning he was the only one for Bethsaida, I think. Huh? And um, he says, because he was his father's son, the scriptures say that he taught him and said unto him, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Meaning that the only love a man can ever show to their son is to teach them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The place of tenderness and biscuits and chocolates is for mothers. But when it comes to the place of the responsibility of a man primarily to his son, the only proof that he can give and produce that he loves him is teaching him. Hallelujah. When the Bible says that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go there because that's where I wanted to center my teaching from today. Let's read. He says, But I would that you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is Praise the Lord. Let's read it one more time. He says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is the head. Now, when the Bible says that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. Many men don't know. That to women, if you want to ask a woman what is the meaning of that scripture, eh? not a man. Her interpretation is simple. Men are Google. Men are what? Google. Google means that anything you put on that search engine it must come with a certain answer. Whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense, it must come with a certain answer. Most preferably, with many alternatives of the same question. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord has anointed men to be leaders over their wives. The reason why the Christ is above the man is because he knows the man will be looked at as Google. And Jesus Christ is the answer. And because he's the answer, it definitely means that when the Christ is on the man, when the woman looks at the man, this man must look like him. And consequently, Christ is of God, right? Now, the reason why I use the analogy of Google is this. One time I asked a woman, a friend of mine, why do women love crazy guys? You know those guys who are very serious, they tuck in, then they put on ties, even on sports days. You know those guys? They don't joke around. They can't be in pitu choir. They don't do anything. You know those guys? They walk very well. They do everything very well. Women don't like those guys. Those guys who don't do anything, they don't lie, they don't cheat, they are back at home at six. Women don't like those guys. I was telling people the other day, a certain friend of mine came for counseling in the office. He said, man, I asked him, what's up? Man, my sister. 
This girl is gonna be church. She's been a good girl. She's good fearing, hard work. And that day she comes and introduces me to her boyfriend. I am, hmm? What's wrong? The problem is the boyfriend she introduced me. She, she, she. The meet my boyfriend, DJ Gurunedi. DJ Gurunedi. Now even me, I joined the anger. Nengamba, bana, mwa sadi abo na bariyo. Obo sa Filipo na funa DJ Guru, DJ Gurunedi. You don't like men who tuck in what? People who are composed. Little did I know that grenades sometimes look like Google. I didn't know that. That sometimes grenades look like Google. Because grenades present a certain confidence. And women, even if you don't know, act like you know. Now, Tom Laganti no mani si mani lang na kuri ramucha aru mama wa angi de tuwa. Wama si tetsu. Na iko abri saure si mani. Grading are very much. Na kai abri si mwa si mani. Mama mama zanti no. Bleke se kari yomo kaziri wa mani wa zidja. Solution. Come on, somebody. Solution. So the woman told me, no. You see, those guys who look like they're bad. They seem to be confident enough. And they give us the assurance that they can find their way out. Because you expect DJ Grunade has a kageto. And I can fuck a watch it in Gira. Umbera street in the Bakurengera or Iskayo Pancha. Will you understand? Grunade has solutions, you understand? Tasulandala, if he's very hungry, the Oxkayo Kapista or Kateke Mugaya, a funescent. Grenade has what? Solution. They don't really want grenade. But it seems as though in our generation, grenades are giving solution. My brother, we better not worry. Never let it to Have you ever seen that they've gotten this girl is not to grenade the table? Never you get her. Never you get her. Why? Confidence. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to your brother, Jack Bob, go and listen to your band. If you want to be your hero, you must compose. Grenade the young girl on singer, Tarua. Go and be great. We tiro kam, we tiga na majuzuru. Move on. Tebari na noke ya, tebari na doyo. Nemo soni zese, tebaru mi mitwe tezidi. Wobo wobo ganye ai zuru genda dayo. Afuno mulala, you understand? Go tangi kila mjenesis. Nga ebru nedi ya teke deda misi. Nesi machi azibu, kanake na moromans. Ayangu ye kubink. So kwa kutila yon pori ni series. Azijila yon misi ndala nyo. Go chari munu wa zani nuu wa produce these children. Simanya metu sera bigati. Simanya wanina bigati. Eno goni mubi bigati. Nga yeee. Grenade here are launching the date into the Why? Because, okay, what is in the back of these women is they want a certain confidence. Never matter how many, you act like you know. Because you're cuckoo. Mwami, tuke nakuli achirero. Nange si mani goroza tulieti. Do you know women hate those mad things? Ne grenade, ne wabata mani cheba na alia. What? Yes, suramo, it don't worry. Don't worry. Everything is gonna be. Kubanga chi? That's how they are wired. Everything is gonna work. Yeah. I know why God placed us at that place where He had to be our head. Because He knew we will get stuck. I said, I'm saying, yeah, that's my intuitive Fukachi. Stuck. When the people of Yavaka divine, you women have questions. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You have what? Your own questions. When a man becomes the head of their home, okay? It means that whether you want it or not, the ultimate communicator to a man is his home and everybody under him. Like the ultimate communicator to a woman is her body. And the ears there are bored. The nose gets bored. The tongue gets bored. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? The legs get bored. They get their gold thing. They waist gets bored. You understand? 
Nekundi na yeye ni bila board na vipeka muka stepping machine ta. Okay. Aba we vinge ngalonga simu kana ngendi board ngalonga na zako. Asiga. The first gets board up. Yep, baby into our. Now maso gaga bila board ngalonga. Nemu aji even me even me teacher. Mm, Nasoka na bukende za bwat na busigi la dene no na kola kaka akabweka. Nemu mubi ni kuakoze. What if even the soldier gets bored? Now, what I can't stand when it's just too hot. How many rats are still there? Why will you in bondage? How many rats are still there? No, Musa Nganga, but just woman. Neke ne Musa ba neke lefuna jukba. Kuga, what on your body doesn't ask? Nothing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's how you are. So the same way women are to their bodies, even as men, when you're at home, the chair has been speaking. The cement is speaking. You understand what I'm saying? Landlord is speaking. When a kid says, I'm going to be a yogi. When a kid says, and the kid cops, he starts calculating hospital bills. When I was growing up, we used to have a guy that used to call Tebereza. He was like a nurse. Now he's a man who is a Tebereza. So the village guys called him what? As in, you can guess and say, Uvuli nachi. Katugezeko kano. The guy pumps you with some drugs. Before you know it, your eyes are the other end. How can you know you have the whatever it is on? Praise the Lord. So at the end of the day, that is why if a man is in that situation and anything around you does not speak to you and you're a man, you like into a woman whose body speaks nothing. Tasiga kumimwa, tayamba na nekiris. Taina, haria wari. Nothing, no, nothing. Haringa buwe, harigo. Ya gara uva uva ya gara gendo. Watu ya gara goma. Sisa, yo, yibi, 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 No. Those ones happen the other side when you're not born again. Sebo, tell your neighbor, mbalo kole, tu kwa gara ngabu wari. Eh, tu kwa gara ne kristo. Tell your neighbor, tu kwa gara ne kristo. Tu kwa gara ngabu wari. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, the issue here that God was communicating to the man was, you must have a grenade mind. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You must have a what? A grenade mind. I'll give an example. I went to East High School, one of the schools I went to, East High. They used to throw every kind of student there. Mwana Akurenye, can you give? You understand? So... We used to have a guy, he was like a very short, small, dark-skinned fellow. And this guy was hip-hop. You understand? He used to put on baggy jeans, very huge sneakers. Gajina disciplined of what? Do you understand? Now, he called himself Jarul. Oh! He would get his hanky, like the rapper Jarul. And then, I zip here like this. Jarul can be there. And entirely survive being the rule. Do you understand what I mean by entirely surviving? If people wanted to cheat, the rule knew where to get. Those are things women want. Okay, in the godly sense, I'm not talking of cheating. But do you understand my point? Exams. If you say they're setting a paper, the rule knows what time the teachers will lock the staff room. He knows which window. He can break through to get which paper, how and when, and how much to sell it. That was Jarul. You might not know the process, but you expect results with Jarul. <laughs> a child can tell Jarul, eh? I want alcohol at 10 a.m. And Jarul tells him, give me two hours. You don't know where it's going to come from. After two hours, you see Jarul coming like water. And I realize that's it. If the child is sick, brother, eh? those my things of I love you too much, they be human responsibility. We shall discuss the results later, but the child is what? 
kati ya I love you even me I love my family you can look at me here I'm a hard work the kid is what sick so one time a certain popular artist came to town we were at school when we had news that the popular artist was coming to town the rule was already selling tickets <laughs> What my women? Am I making sense? Maybe I may be wrong. Am I making sense? Jaruru yari afunye da ticket. Tetumanje ya zija. We don't know who sold Jaruru tickets, but Jaruru had what? From that day, kids changed the name from Jaruru to Jarule. Nimani komu to my Jarule. Tate gerekeka. It's in between Jarule and Rule. Tate Do you understand? Tate gerekeka. Because ultimately, he makes things work. He just knows how to what? Make things work. When we were getting end of term, he was already giving kids complimentaries to all these clubs. And the fellow who is surviving in town came from Bari. But the guy knows his way around what? a solution. And the solution based. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Now, the place of submission, for example, to a woman is, if she says, are we eating supper today? She means you shouldn't come back with only the answer of yes, but what should be eaten? Because you're supposed to be thinking like, Jarure. Who gets a student boy? Hearing there is a concert coming, and the guy already has his way to tickets, before people in town access them. How many brains has he cooked to create those tickets? Are you some brains maker? You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because you're the leader here. You're Google. You must have an answer. Whether you want it or not, you must have an answer. With many options to choose from. These women, they don't want to know. They don't want to know. Some of you can agree with me. There are women who have husbands who are thieves. He's a not that we support stealing, but solution-based practices. You understand? You see, um, the situations, the circumstances. I was thinking about these things. I was reading the Oxford Dictionary. Someone you mean that Oxford Dictionary? Please, Tom Woody Encyclopedia. Solutions. That's what you can have a guy in a movie. I 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 have a guy I am by Jaruru. You get my point? When I was growing up, there was a guy who used to live in the same area where we were raised. And I knew this guy was a thief. Sometimes he would come back short. <laughs> you know, and thieves don't die. I don't know why. the proverbial cat. They don't die. They just stay there. And they have skins. Thieves have skins. They can beat this face. And tomorrow the guy wakes up and goes, as though he dipped his skin in uh, the river, like Naman. So I say, this guy was a thief. And we knew him for a fact. And then he got to a point where he could steal and his wife helped him. Maybe the woman was not a thief. You get my point? But at that particular point, now when I was a banker one time, they opened a case on this guy. And looking on it, I realized his two children... His wife and him were all involved in a fraud. All of them. This is not one guy. Uh, wife, children. You get it? You see, even the worst drug addicts in the world and drug dealers, they also have women. The baddest guys in the world, they also have women. But man, some guys were so good. So good. They are humble. The eye and their clothes and the edges of their trousers are like a knife. Babaya gala kusala keke kupata isako visa ampare wani. Nothing. Because as many of those guys as they come, webakoma, awabama zi. No solution, nothing. Kid is sick. I don't know. We need supper. I don't know. We need lunch. I don't know. Can we shift? I don't know. This bed is old. Our chairs are old. 
I don't know. He tells you already the bed is over. That's why we've had issues in our nation of women and border border guys. Have you noticed? Kumamba mukaza kababuga, honey, there is no lunch. Oba border guy can come here. Boss, no little lunch. Solution. Name the other guy. Yeah, I know you want lunch, but honey, don't you know our paycheck is on twenty-four? Mama, mama, mama. Pala yoro zunguru. Because for them, they want immediate solutions. Right? You're going far mm-hmm, if the need is food. Samba picholete chi? Emele. Kati obaba liba ogeranti bawa avuga piti. That's not a problem. Yeah, ya garachi? Emele. That is why I feel sorry for a man who says me I can't submit to any man. Because trust me, you'll get stuck. In a certain way. You know, that's the problem with us men. Eh? We have ego. That superiority complex. You get one point? The point that in the mind, in the Holy Spirit, in the Katonda, in the earth, in the heaven, in the mercy, go on your hands, the pity job. I'm what? All in all. You understand? The Holy Spirit and the Dinga. I'm the head of my family. Yes. Even though you are the head of your family, Christ is your head. Because you'll get to a point where you need solutions. And it can only take the Christ to get you those bricks of a man. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the Bible says that the sons of this generation have become wiser than the sons of the light. In their own generation, the sons of this world, in their own generation, have become wiser than the sons of the light. It means that if Jarule knows how to find tickets before they are advertised and sold anywhere, the Christian man must know how to avail certain things before anybody out there does. Because we are solution. We are Google. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the place that placed you in the place of leadership, man of God, is because to your wife, you're the ultimate answer. Even women who know, by the way, do you realize that some women, even though they know, they want you to know. Even though she what? She knows. She wants you to what? To know. She can be there and she knows everything, but she acts stupid. You see, man, Nina, she knows. To get a call, I didn't see my knee, but she's testing what? Intellect to see whether this is Jarul or. Did you understand what I'm trying to tell you? So, some men, of course, also when they get in that realm, I'm going to see my knee and I'm going to get see my knee. Hey, to be what to say. 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 To be you understand? Look for a born again Christian man with a Jarul instinct. <laughs> with a what? A Jarul instinct. Muloko le Burundi ate Yesu. Nenga inamu ka Jarul instinct. Because if it is the fathers who teach, imagine the kind of children you'll have if the man you have is a. <laughs> and then you have a kid who is one year old. <laughs> <laughs> many autistic kids are many a time missing a father figure in their lives because we teach. We teach. The woman gives language. I teach the way. That's my responsibility. That is my responsibility. That's the place of leadership upon your life. And because we all have shortcomings and we might never be perfect in the flesh, the place that vindicates us is our submission entirely to a power that is higher than us, which is the Christ. Who has been made our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification. He has been made our wisdom. Now how can you be in the world and say, me, I am a man. Nobody can talk to me. Listen, the moment you start to get into that realm, you're in trouble failing to produce certain results. You'll be weighed and found wanting. Hallelujah. And that is the essence of why I try to now speak to men and tell them, look, some men think submission is for women only. No, sir. Men also must learn to submit. People say women are supposed to be what? Submissive. But let me also commit to men. Even men are supposed to be what? You submit to Christ as your wife submits to you. That is the order. She submitted to you because she expects you to submit to Christ. 
If a man has a distinction in this life of the grace of God, and he does not look to a power higher than him, that man is ultimately in trouble. One day you will land in trouble. One day you land in trouble, and no man can get you out. Why? Because you're your own island, you're your own Jesus, you're your own Holy Spirit. You baptize yourself, you circumcise yourself. Hallelujah. We also must be kept in check, even though you're married. If you have a spiritual father in your life, the guy calls you and says, what are you being with this woman? She's not your wife. You must have somebody. You say, hey, Amanda, what? Sorry. There are those things of who talks to me. Then Salao. That's why women, some of you, it's your fault. You skip God fearing guys and then you go with Matia and see guys up there who can't even step in church. And then you have trouble and then you bring your head. I mean, to be in some head. Okay, it's okay if you entered it before you got born again. But now you're born again. You're born again. And then you enter a relationship with a fellow who can't even sit in church. What in Mulete Mutata Ture? I will go in the Ingadza. There is hope. Because they be hearing, even though they are acting like they are not, but they be what? Hearing. Now you go in over and I'm saying, I'm going to take your And then after that, you want to bring your head. I'm saying, I'm going to go to the Ingadza. I'm going to go to the You understand? But you see, if the guy is submitted to Christ and he has a spiritual authority, he has the right to call him and say, Boss, something is wrong here. And that man ought to be humble and say, you know what, I need help. Prayer. Mm, that's it. End of story. At least let him have the ability to come to church. It might not be a believer, but let him have a fear for God. That is if what you get amulet. But if you're born again, now you're born again, you're not yet married. Eh? <laughs> if you're Communicate, speak of the things that are not as though they are. To by faith. Substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. You come with me thinking, thinking, because listen, if he's not submitted to Christ, he's submitted under the devil. The white middle ground. No man is of himself in this world. If he doesn't fear God, he must have another thing. But no man is of himself. Say amen. Hallelujah. So now, the place of us teaching, the place of us taking time to teach, for example, the place where now I'm grown, for example, you're going to have children, or some of you have children now, there are things that you're putting in your children eh, every other day, because those things are going to determine the way that they should go. That's why the Bible says that train up a child in the way they should go, for when they shall grow, they will not what? Depart. Every man, because we are solution, when children, wives, our relatives, your mother looks at you, they look at you as solution. You see, when Mary comes to Jesus, she knows Jesus doesn't make wives. She knows the boy was raised by Joseph. Joseph knew only one thing, to make tables. Now, even though this is not tables, and this is why she expects that Jesus must have a second mind on how wine is made. Do you understand what I mean? The scriptures speak of Rachel one time when she was barren. Eh? She went to Isaac and told him, Give me children or I die. And you barren. Guy has He has proved that he functions, but this woman doesn't want to know. Your Google, give me children or I die. Now, Foolishly, the man says, am I God? <laughs> she looks at you as God. Try to understand this man of God. You don't say, ah, we need food. And then you say, am I the government? <laughs> Get a jarul instinct. No, 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 the man, Jacob, Yazalako. Yazalako. 
No one at Imanya are barren. See, the problem is not Jacob. The problem is her. But when frustrations come, whether you want it or not, you're Google. That responsibility we can't escape because you are my head. And your head is... That is why the scriptures tell you that at the barrenness of Isaac's wife, the Bible says, Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. And Rebecca had a child. Because in the first place, it was the responsibility of Isaac if his wife was barren. barren. And then the man says, Ah, I say, Nyabo, can no You understand? What makes you a husband? If it needs a prayer, the ultimate prayer comes from your mouth. If it needs wiring, the ultimate wire is you. There is a reason why Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebecca conceived. Rebecca was not even in the mix. No. She was the barren one, but the responsibility was on Isaac. The responsibility was on Isaac. It is the same here. When we run out of wine, it doesn't matter whether you've never done a miracle. The point is, you are the son of God and Mary needs wine. You must be able to have a certain instinct in you that can tell the servant, fill those jars with water. Very sure that when they dip in, wine must come out. And that's what women expect us to do. They want us to be supermen. They want us to turn water into wine. Without necessarily putting grapes and fermenting it. Man of God. You think Mary was stupid? Because that's who we are. We can make wine out of water. Even as we don't know how. If Jarul can bring tickets before they are sold, how much more? How, how much more? You which has been saved, consecrated, set apart, full of the Holy Ghost, and speak in tongues. Jarul, tell you, get You must have a what? A solution. Make wine. Tell your neighbor, make wine. Tell your neighbor, make wine. Make wine. Tell you again, I quit it. I'm an abogan. Make wine. Turn water into wine. Tell you again, I could see him be there. It's not by power, not by might. Sarah Rababa. Tell your neighbor, I'm a solution giver. I have solutions. I'm deeper than Google. I know how to fix my marriage. I know how to fix my finances. It is working. I know how to fix my children. Listen, in Peter chapter 3, verse 7, when he's warning us about women, eh, he says these words. He says, likewise ye husbands, dwell with your wives according to what? To be taken to Musiru. O musadi o Musiru ta wata. O seke la seke la kukunyonyola. O musadi o Musiru ta kolachi. Ta wata. O musadi o Musiru ta kolachi. These women want smart guys. They don't work with guys, no. They are looking for a Zarure instinct in a Christian man. Because he knows, the Bible says, you dwell with them according to knowledge. If you don't know, don't dwell. 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 God has never asked women to deal with us in knowledge. Uh -uh. He asked us because our head is Christ. He has been made our wisdom. We couldn't be men without a certain mind. And that mind could only come after Christ. A woman can stand in a man but not a man who is weak here. He can be, but here, here, here. You can be anything, but here. Chumula bakara bakurunedi. 
kuma ba grenade bali nengeri je bali ye bintu ntubiliao babiza mu ghetto babiza mu byaro but the guys know how to they know their way around many things because that's how she trusts the beginning of their place of trust is i am trusting you with my life you get my point when i was in my father's house he did everything for me i might be a helper in this but i can only help who i can trust because if blind men lead the blind they all fall in ditches i don't want to help a guy who's going to land me in trouble says the woman temu fire ba siru tebaze so bana mwe mwaze kwa muri bagezi tele neba tuli bagezi tel so our standard of wisdom is entirely christ we can't claim it on many books we can't claim it on genes we can't claim it on our grandfathers no if it is so there are people who had very clever people before them but they are foolish in the things of this world the best doctors are smoking up to death he knows the causes of cancer but he can't stop smoking i'm not talking of that wisdom i'm talking of the christ because that is the christ who can not only give you the mind to be the best doctor let me tell you the guys i started with in ucu can tell you me i was an a plus i passed very well i have my transcript it is clear me i passed well You get my point? But I remember that in my senior six I didn't perform well as I should have. Not because I was stupid, but I didn't have Christ seriously. But when I got wired in campus, something came on this head. I don't know what it is, but I could understand everything. You get my point? Because that is just education. When a man is born again, when a man accepts the Lord Jesus, you stop functioning under your wisdom. He becomes your wisdom. He becomes your wisdom. He becomes your knowledge. He becomes your knowledge. Because the beginning of foolishness is when a man says in his heart there is no god. Kati tulina ego. We have a certain ego that sometimes pushes out a power higher than us. It's really into a solution. And then things fall into our lives and we can't fix nothing. And then instead of hating ourselves because I've realized one thing with an egoistic kind when it's egoistic and it fails it will want to hurt itself without necessarily putting pain on itself so bala bakuba bakazi the scripture says that a man who harms his wife hates himself so when you see a man saying ah he just wants to beat himself without causing pain and because the scriptures are clear that the two of you are one ngawa kuwa yaringa ya wali mtu aba mani yekuba dimutegera because you are one and so if he wants to hurt himself without necessarily feeling pain you become the what the punching bag why because superstar ni namusinga he can't really go to god and say nemu kama here i am stuck here i need your mind on this bana ya basaje nafe tutie kukatunda tutie kukatonda tuberaonga nafe bakazi bafe batula bako mu church ne baga banaye mwa mwanga saba nafe tutie kuti kukatonda you see let me tell you something about genealogy here when the bible says that israel shall be reckoned by genealogy whether you want it or not one indifference on a man can affect generations one indifference that is why rahab can be a female prostitute and not have an effect on her next seed But if the man was the prostitute because remember the bible is very clear <laughs> that the life is in the blood and doctors tell you the blood is in the spot that's why you're named after your father you're your father's child because in its own the blood teaches something their family is all tempered it was a teaching that was passed on from the man's sperm The essence of us submitting to the Christ is that we will redirect our DNA to the Christ DNA. That is the essence. The guy called Obed. The name Obed is translated as slave. The spirit of slavery dwelt on Obed. And the scriptures tell us that Jesse was a seed of Obed. You get my point? When Obed was a slave in the very spirit of slavery and he produced a boy called Jesse the character on Jesse's life 
did not know how to live leading. It only knew how to live serving. But not leading. This is the difference. You get my point? Now, the place of service must begin from a leadership mindset, but not just the servant-slave mindset. If a man serves as a slave, it's different from when a man serves as a leader. It was not the responsibility, if you read your scriptures, for Jesse to send David to take bread. Men don't do that. Some of you have not yet understood what I mean. I don't think that was the place of Jesse to tell David, take bread to your brothers. For Jesse to prepare bread for men at war. Jesse should have known what men at war need. The enemy they are fighting is Syria. Jesse never taught his boys because he was a seed of a slave. And slaves are there to receive orders, not to inspire and give orders because they are not in a leadership position. So because he is a son of a slave, all the slave knows how to is to teach the boy how to. Because let me tell you, women have problems with men who are like women. Do you know that? You're her husband. You're not her girlfriend. Oh, why do you think they never stop fighting between each other? Because girlfriend is their competing of the same species. It's none of our business who is given the bone and who isn't. But some men are like that. Your boys are out at war and they're determining the slices of bread. I saw because of the lineage and the promise that was made on your life, Jesse, for out of the root of Jesse, so come out of the sea. We expect that Jesse must raise up an army that should defeat Israel. But Jesse is sending bread and water to an army we are sure was provided for. Alinake and I are indifferent. Who understands what I mean? Because he's the son of a slave. And the slave never taught him to lead. The slave just received instruction. So what really makes us men? For example, why do men teach their sons to hunt? Because he wants to create a certain instinct in you to know how to get food when you need food. He doesn't want you to get to a point where you're hungry and then you're waiting for what to cook. You get my point? Now this was what happened because of that guy's weakness. He raised an army that was indifferent to the war of God. David, being one of his last boys, the scriptures tell us, do you know why God chose David? It was because David met another father earlier. He met another father earlier. This boy took on the instinct of shepherd and went into the field. While his brothers are all learning how to fight the best battles in the world, the boy is in the field looking after and that is what but the shepherd anointing. The scriptures say, for when I was a child, I longed for only one thing, that the presence of God will return back to Israel. That was the heart of a man after God's own heart. In fact, the literal Hebrew translation for that word is actually a man with God's heart. So God got his heart and put it in David. You get my point? David raises a life of a seed, of a servant, that he can't even celebrate success between him and his God because servants are indifferent to success. Success doesn't minister to them anyway. Kuanga, you are in a slavery mentality. For them, they think all their lives they are subject to elements, institutions, colleges, family. Because they don't carry a spirit of lordship. You realize that the most memorable testimonies that he says about the success of a man who ought to be a king is with another man who is not his father. For the first time is when we realize that actually the boy had never killed a bear. But the man he had in his life as Jesse did not create an atmosphere to tell his boys you can kill bears and lions. The first man 
he has to tell it to. He's trying to convince also. Because that man also is not convinced that he puts on an armor on the little boy, thinking that the boy thinks armor. Kumba, the boy is thinking circumcision. Uncircumcision. How can this uncircumcised Philistine? Jesse didn't teach David that. If he did, then one of the brothers would have sorted Goliath. And because of that seed of the slavery mentality, you have men which are at war, but they don't produce results. He's working, but he's not breaking through. I don't know what I'm trying to tell you. He's doing everything he can. He's sweating, toil night and day, but the spirit of sonship, that distinction of the kingly anointing on him, to tell him that I'm a king and I make king, I have this faith in me that something will happen. Water will turn to wine because I carry the godly instinct. They don't carry. Why? Because they are a result of the seed of slavery. You get my point? So, how can David kill a bear and get back home and realize he can't tell Jesse that? How can David kill a lion and get back home and realize he can't tell his father that? Because he realizes dad is also indifferent, like his slave father. That is why the scriptures tell us, Saul loved David much. Because Saul always saw the kingly thing in him on David. While Jesse saw the last born. That even when the Lord leads Saul to come in the house to anoint the children of David, the first person who comes out, Samuel thought it's so. God tells him, no, don't look at appearance. They get every guy there. Until Samuel has to ask Jesse, don't you have any other son? He says, oh! This boy was the salvation of the whole lineage. But imagine a father who can't see that this boy is something. Because in his own self, he also doesn't have the instinct in him. And because I can't have, that is the thing. How can a man be born again and fail to raise a mantle in his own household? If your children never serve, it's your responsibility and it's your weakness. It's your problem, not your wife. Brother, you're the one who teaches. I must have a preacher in my house. I must. I must. Because the wirings of the spirit are deeper than just what the child will observe to do. I must teach him in a certain way. Why? Because the thing on me knows that I was not born by a slave. I'm submitted to a king. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, which is Jesus Christ. We must reproduce our own kind. We must reproduce our own kind. We must reproduce kinds that are even deeper than us. Why? Because we are men. That's our responsibility. I don't understand how a man can blame his child when that child is your seed. It's like a woman who blames her husband. Where did you come out from? He's saying that this man, he's a dog. What are you? Where did you come from? Listen, your husband is as stupid as you are. Erabo mufumo bato vumye bufumi. Yende wala ba musadja. No, musadja mochi. Gwari mukazi mochi. Kwa wafam musadja atari mo. Gwato nchi. That's why the Bible says, She shall do him good all the days of her life. Because you can't think of a witness on your husband and you don't carry it. And likewise his children. Mubato biyaga la tofumbi walinda ko. To Papa. So now we are trying to define men above physical appearance and genitalia. You get what I'm trying to tell you? So, David can only confide in a man who is not really his father. And the scriptures tell us, Saul related with David until Saul started to call David my son. And the time Saul called David my son, Jesse was nowhere. Yet he was the biological father of this boy. But David could mix enough with a kingly anointing and not the seed of a slave. Because there was something on David very different by reason of the God that he was dealing with. Very different. But when demons come on Saul, you realize David can play the harp and demons leave Saul. But when Jesse is sick, David can do nothing. Because as long as Jesse is alive, he looks at David as just a mere lustborn who even cannot appear as king. If I am giving kings 
he could align boys who look like their kings, but David did not and could not look like a king. Yet God had chosen the little boy. Now, God wants to raise men who can sense that from afar. Because that instinct in your spirit will know how to raise your daughter. Listen, you can't have that instinct and not see a star before they are made. And because you see stars before they are made, you know exactly what to do. That is why Joseph was never indifferent because Jacob saw it from day one. Even if he's in the prison, for him he still knows what we're actually into. There's a reason why the guy loved that boy. There's a reason why he felt attached to Joseph. He can be funny, but there's something on Joseph that sticks because of the love the father had toward him. And that's why many men who are not raised by their fathers, many of those guys really, it takes them too long to really get on the spotlight and be something. Because they need somebody to, just those small words to tell the guy, you can. You can. Because honestly, some issues really do happen. And they go pursue them emotional or not. There are questions. I am a man. I'm supposed to be having my own home now. I'm supposed to be driving my own car now. You understand what I'm telling you? Women don't think those things. For them, they think, I need a man. Who has a car? And a house. Not that you a Mwadja kuyamba mugaga. Balandi za chimeze. Serastu labizu se. Even me, if my daughter tomorrow was married. I don't want her to say, Daddy, the guy is poor. He has nothing, but he loves me. No, 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 darling. Get a guy who loves you. He's rich. I think he fears God. Now what everybody? Nothing to make of fear. Hey, I guess I've already not sent it about you. I think about you. I'm going to come about you. I know you take. Let us my things up. I'm going to come out. Even if he doesn't have, at least he must have potential. He must have that instinct. One day, future. And people start to look at the Thank God those men again, I repeat, are not here. But a guy will never be one. And yet you are Google. Mummy, I know Jesus only. No. But it's Apostle Christ. I'm pretty deep. Deep, deep. I know Pacquiao, Mummy. And I'll make a lame man walk up in a blind eye, raise a dead body, but still know there is a Floyd Mayweather. We know all things. We have an action from on high. Come on, brother. Nobody say, me, me, I only know God. I don't want to know. Ah, you know a bit. Because we know all things. We just know all things. Hallelujah. The problem now here is, slave produces seed, Jesse, Jesse, Indifferent to greatness. But Jesse can't identify greatness, can't uplift greatness. Now Jesse produces greatness because of the promise of God, but greatness cannot sit under the leadership of Jesse, neither can submit to the mind of Jesse. That is why the greatness submitting under Jesse is a problem. Greatness will rebel. The problem is not the boy rebel. The problem is Jesse. And consequently, Jesse is also not the problem. The problem is Obed. Now, because of that kind of experience, David is confused. Because the guy who is supposed to be biological dad, he hasn't really taught. But he wants to be the best dad there is. So he tries to teach Solomon. But he's teaching Solomon things that he didn't fully understand. You get my point? So Solomon can say, I was my father's boy. He taught me. But when he was teaching Solomon, there are things he didn't teach Solomon. Because even to him in his generation, there were weaknesses because he couldn't know how to control this. Now, some people plainly think he killed their Seba. He must have been a lustful fellow. But that was not the lesson for David. Many people would get David and put him in a counseling session and teach David, stop a lasting over Bathsheba. Because they think 
the, the last toward Bathsheba was the problem with David. No. If you go deeper to what David must be told, the scriptures tell you, the day he goes out on that porch to see that naked woman, he refused to go for war. When kings go for war. So when he refuses to go for war, temptation comes into lust. If David was on a war zone, he would not have watched Bathsheba naked, could not have killed Uriah. So many people think with David it was a last issue. It wasn't a last issue. David needed a man who had to teach him that when the time for kings comes to go for war, even after you've defeated a Syrian spirit, you still go for war because that's what kings do. But that should have been told to him in a Jesse's house, not a soul. Because if Saul has to teach him that, and after one or two victories, Saul's countenance has to change, he again gets more confused. Because the guy who ought to teach him to be a king has a problem when he's ten times the king. Because now it becomes competition. It could have been comfortable in Jesse's hands. Because if Jesse sees his boy ten times better, he's prouder. But Jesse is a seed of a slave. He can't reproduce himself ten times better. But the man to whom he commits the boy after winning, even so that man can call this boy son, but only temporarily until the boy becomes ten times better. One day when the streets start to sing that Saul kills a thousand and David ten thousand, there's going to be a problem. Why? Because even though Saul loves David because of the kingly anointing, he's not his sperm. I know our coma. Continence changes. Now, when he is king, he doesn't know how to be king. But if Jesse was king, he didn't need to tell David, go for war. No. David just needed to be in the same house of a man who went for war, when kings go for war. And he knows that if my father went for war, I can't hear war and I stay. Because if I stay, it doesn't make me king. That's who I am. Naturally, kings go for war. When the time of war comes, they don't slap back. Because if they do, after the deception of defeating Syrians, and that's the thing about the Syrian spirit, it is very deceptive after defeating it. It can expose any kingly anointing to something very different. And that is why, on the very glory on Elisha, he refuses to receive from the Syrian. Because he knows Syrians just don't give victory over them or a place of being above any Syrian is only for a while. You've read about them. They know how to act like they are from afar and dress in clothes they have to because that's their nature. They come a place around the children of God. It takes a certain instinct to smell them afar and know how to deal with them. All that place that tells you to say, even though I've defeated this silly thing, tomorrow there is another one. Or the very place that knows that even though I've done a miracle in him, I don't need his substance. My help comes from another source. I am kingly. Gehazi makes the mistake. The scriptures tell us he walks back with the same leprosy. That is why certain people have become those who bless them in the world. Do you know even some ministers' ministries are failing because of one seed put in their ministry? I know a guy. A certain minister gave this man of God a car. And the fellow shot. He stopped functioning. Totally. To his wife. Totally. He had to release the car. And the day he released, <laughs> strength arose. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, at the end of the day, when David is father, he doesn't know who is king, <laughs> who shouldn't be king. In fact, do you realize, David was reminded about Solomon. He had forgotten. Yet he's the one who promised Beersheba. But the day he kills Uriah, because he didn't go for war, the scriptures tell us the sword shall never leave your house. That is the thing that settles on Solomon. And Solomon becomes king, but he also doesn't know how to be king. He also doesn't know how to be king. Because his father didn't know how. David didn't know how to be king. He didn't have even a line of leadership. Amnon read Tamar, and David did nothing. Because he didn't know how kings respond. And it took another Absalom to observe. The Bible says, he said neither good nor evil. <laughs> then I was meditating about it. The Bible says, for two years, Absalom said nothing good or evil to Amnon. There are people, they say nothing good or evil. Neither they want to kill you one day. Man, those people. Two years. Tamo nyigira, kayomba. Amnon adamba itzikawa. 
Kumbe superstar is planning. Anyway, back to the issue. So when David is king, even when Amnon rapes Tamar, he doesn't know how to deal with it. The scriptures tell us he let it pass. But that place of letting it pass burst another seed on Absalom. The next thing we know, Absalom kills Amnon. A few years later, that very Absalom wins the heart of Israel against his own father. Because the vengeance on Absalom also doesn't know where it should end. Even though in the first place, the anger was rightful because they raped his own sister. Because he also doesn't know how to deal with it. The father hasn't showed him how. And then sometimes we have that process and weakness as men of using a wrong formula but with the right spirit. That is why your investments fail. You should have listened to your wife. Those women have that sense. But that man needed his father to teach him that sometimes when you're making huge investments, talk to your wife. That's my a guy investing now. The wife tells him, but I have a feeling, I even told you, I warned you about that guy that is going to rob you. Wow. Yes, he learned the hard way. But because he didn't have a father, who could teach him that sometimes you have to listen to? Your wife. So even Absalom, he has the right heart because he's angry that Amnon has raped and nothing is done. But he also doesn't know how to fix it. So he kills his brother. And that very rage turns from his brother and he realizes the problem was not Amnon. The problem was my father. He did nothing. He turned all the hearts of Israel against his father and David was just out of Israel. By the time David comes back, judgment is on Absalom. Solomon dies. David is reminded that hey, there's a Solomon. David had forgotten because he doesn't even know that I promised my shepherd that your boy is going to be king. By the time he's going to be king and I'm about to go, I've already forgotten I promised. So how much did I teach when I've forgotten? So when Solomon says, my father taught me, what did he teach him? Oh, isn't there a possibility that the one which was taught was not taught too much because the father has to even be reminded that he made a covenant before God that the boy will be king. That is the one who becomes king. He also doesn't know how to raise. By the time Rehoboam gets into the feet of his father as Solomon to take over, there is already war. But you don't blame Rehoboam. Because Rehoboam also doesn't understand how dad was dealing. He put graven images and funny idols in a house of the Lord. He put these things in the house of the Lord. He saw his father worship another God. He learned that those things are possible. That is why later the split up of the kingdom, when Jeroboam takes the ten tribes, he also starts demonic worship. Because they saw it from the father. The father was not taught how to honor the presence of God. Yet David could not have done that because there are things David didn't know. But David knew God and he loved his God. He danced naked for the guy. He is the one who even gives Solomon the things to use to build. But how Solomon gets in the house and is indifferent. Because at the point when he's supposed to be taught the power of that house, he's forgotten. Because David doesn't know how to make kings that he has promised to make. So the next thing you know, Rehoboam comes out, the scriptures tell us, Solomon was mean to his people. He produces a boy Rehoboam, meaner. He said that if my father is beating you one slash, I'm going to beat you two. And out of that, splittings come, and Israel splits, and the ten tribes go with Jeroboam, and Rehoboam stays with the two, Judah and the Benjamin. And these two have fought each other since. Up to today, Israel has been divided because of one man, a slave, who should have known he was king. And in all his mix, the women are not mentioned. Raise your hands and speak to God. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.